Hi everyone, this is the fifth video in this series of Children's Book of the Year shortlisted uh, books and overview. So this category is the information book category. Most of these are quite long books so I'm actually not going to read any of them to you apart from one, I think. We'll see. <laughs> so the six are there. The first one is called The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals and that's by Sammy Bailey and Sammy has written other books similar to this one. Searching for Cicadas is by Leslie Gibbs and that's illustrated by Judy Watson and A Hollow is a Home by Abby Mitchell illustrated by Astrid Hicks. Willem, a Birrow story by Auntie Joy Murphy and um, Andrew Kelly and illustrated by Lisa Kennedy. Young Dark Emu, a truer history brought by Bruce Pascoe. And Yahoo Creek, an Australian mystery by Toby Riddle. So the first book in this category we'll look at is the en Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals. This is an amazing book. And the author has chosen the most hideous looking animals you could imagine. Although some, some of them are hideous but kind of cute as well. It's a really engaging book. There's lots of information and it's a book that you can come back to time and time again. So the next one is Searching for Cicadas. It's funny because Cicada was a book in last year's Children's Book of the Year Awards and now we have an information book about cicadas. This is one of those combination books where you have the story and then you have the information about the cicadas. It's quite interesting, it's written in the first person. The um, narrator of the book goes on a camping trip with his grandpa to find different types of cicadas. I didn't realise there were so many different types of cicadas with very unusual names as well. It's a really lovely, informative book. Thank you. Next one. So, A Hollow is a Home. This is a book all about hollows and the Australian animals who call them home. So it's beautiful. In fact, 340 species of animals are covered in this book. And um, it's, there's a good message in here about the need to protect the environment, to look after the habitat who require or are dependent upon these hollows. So a very lovely book to look at when you're in the GLC. This is Willem, a Birrarung story. Now, Birrarung is the indigenous name for the Yarra River. So it's a stunning book. The illustrations are by indigenous artist Lisa Kennedy, and it's told, as I already said, by Auntie Joy Murphy and Andrew Kelly. And it tells the story of one day in the life of this river. And to help out with this, I will read this book, is a glossary of translations at the back of the book. to help you work out the meaning of the words. So we'll just read this one, Willem. The end papers in this are just gorgeous with the platypus there. Me no leave it, Yarra my country. There's no mountains for me on the Murray. And that was said by William Barak in 1874, long, long time ago. A newer rises, turning clouds over the distant city red. Bunjil soars over mountain ash, flying higher and higher as the wind warms. Below Birarung begins its long windy path down to Pelham Warreen. Deep in the Yeren, Wallet comes home to sleep in a dark bark-lined nest inside a hollow tree. Panem falls on Dejerang, flows down Wirup and soaks into Yimin Beak. So all of these words, you can work out what they mean by looking at the illustrations. So there's the possum there and the birds as well. As more rain falls, Barn begins to flow over Yimin and Beak and gathers into Yuluk. Nearby, Baroin perches on Kom Badik. There's a little birdie. Anxiously calling to her mate. Oh, there's her mate. His bright blue breeding colours. He flits from frond, chasing insects. Soon Yaluk joins with Yaluk and becomes Birrarung. 
That's how the different rivers come together. Oh, look at those black cockatoos. Young guy, young guy, fly down the valley with great slowing, flapping wing beats, searching for the pines planted where Birarung has been dammed. Pine cones are rich with seed. That means they grow a lot. Look. Where Birarung begins to, begins to run through farmland, Marum, resting on soft forepaws, neatly clip booth from her pouch, Marum looks out. So the kangaroos of Marum. Hidden behind tangled roots in the bank of Birarung, Dulai Wurung lies in her burrow, a platypus, curled around her newly hatched babies. Wa flies around Birarung with his brothers, making his slow call, drawing out the last note so everyone can hear. That's an Australian raven. You might call them a crow. From her long burrow in the bank of Birarung, Warren comes out to eat. In her pouch is her young one. Her pouch opens backwards so she doesn't flick in dirt when she digs. It's a wombat. So much life on the Yarra River. Tajeri sleeps snuggled up. Who's Tajeri? Could be the, um, what do you call that, Susan? Flying, no, the possum. Sugar glider. glider, sugar glider. Um, snuggled in the nesting box, fixed to a garum. He dreams of gliding from tree to tree and of sweet nectar and tasty insects. Near the city, Bathmu shares a nest with eight little ducklings. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful illustrations? In evening light, Bogon scurries along the edge of Birarung, looking for dinner, maybe a tasty fish or two. Drips fall from his waterproof fur. He flicks thick, thick white lipped, tipped tail. That's a water rat there, by the way. As Nua sets, Wajul floats on the surface, ready to dive. She watches carefully for the silver, silvery flicker of a school of anchovies. She can surprise with a scoop of her huge bill. Sharp-eyed bundle soars overhead, watching everything spread out beneath him. Fresh water, which begins, began its flow as Panmin, falling on Jajaran, mixes into Palam Warren, Birarung is wallum too many. There we go, and that's the end of the story of Birarung. Bir Sorry for my mispronouncing. Beautiful book. Okay, next book in this category. This, I think, will probably win. Bruce Pascoe wrote a book, book called Dark Yumi for adults, and this is the young, younger reader version. It doesn't have a lot of text in it. He's also done the illustrations because he's an artist. But in this book, he is arguing that we need to recognise Indigenous ancestors and how they protected the landscape, how they cultivated the landscape, how they weren't just hunter and gatherers, that they did actually uh, grow seeds and have flour, that they trapped eels and, and they were farmers of the land and they cared for it beautifully as well. So it's a uh, it's beautifully produced book and I think that it might win in this category, but who knows. And the next one, Yahoo Creek. This is a fascinating little book. It explores the mysterious Yahoo or Yowie or Hairy Man that was a myth basically back in the early, uh, mid 1800s, right through to 1944. And this book is made up of a, a whole lot of news articles that have been written about the Yahoo. And, and that tells the story. It's quite interesting. The illustrations are amazing with their sort of, not sepia, but their blue and white and moonlit kind of ethereal look about it. So uh, that's the last book in this category that we have for you. Thank you.